Hello, and I'm joined today by a friend of mine, Jan. Uh, Jan, it's really good to see you. It's good to see you too, Paul. So it, it is nice to be together. It's been a very long time. Uh, the cameras won't pick it up, but we're socially distanced. We're, we're at least three metres apart, I would say. So Jan, thank you for coming and being with me today. Um, we've been talking for a little while now uh, about doing this video and uh, I, I know you're nervous. Um, I get nervous as well, believe it or not. Um, but actually we, we've come because um, you're sharing some of your testimony, some of your story, and in particular about some of the issues that you faced around eating disorders. So thank you, uh, it's a very brave thing to do. And uh, let's just start though, if we may, by going right back to the beginning, when this first occurred for you, and uh, where you were at, what life was like at that time. Well, Paul, um, um, I grew up in a Christian household. Um, my dad didn't come to church, but my mum and my two sisters, we both went to church. We all became Christians, me and my sisters, at a young age. And um, I was baptised when I was 14, but unfortunately, I wasn't a very happy child, very happy teenager, and um, in late teens I developed an eating disorder called anorexia nervosa, and I lost a lot of weight very quickly. I became completely obsessed with exercise. I would run morning, noon and night, um, and if I couldn't for any reason, I became really stressed and anxious. Um, so it, it sort of took hold in my late teens, early twenties and um, went on for a, f for a few years until I became very low weight and I was constantly feeling ill, cold, tired and I realised um, that I needed help. I mean throughout all this I had been talking and sharing with God. I, I didn't really share with anybody else. I had a, great bunch of Christian friends but never felt able to share with them I never have um, but I used to write letters and poems to God and um, when I was in the middle of that bout of anorexia I did try to get rid of God but he wouldn't go so from that moment on I've never doubted him um, at all um, he's always been there and I've always needed him so at that point, you, you say that you, you realised that you needed help. Um, so as a, a young person, um, suffering with the things that you were going through, uh, battling your, your faith with those things, what was that like actually at that point where you started to, to look for others to, to help you? Oh, Paul, it, it, was, it was scary um, for one thing because an eating disorder is really about control and you're, you're good and take that step to relinquish some of that control um, but I decided I would reach out to to somebody um, that I knew and that was a Christian and ask if they would help me go to the GP because I realized I was in real trouble um, unfortunately um, I was met with the response that I wouldn't be like this if I was a Christian um, which was quite tough to, to hear and but it did make me rely on God more and I didn't ever go to the GP and not at that time and God did help me through it. Um, I, I left work and moved to Northamptonshire to do some voluntary work with a Christian charity there and I gradually managed to um, eat more I was always exercising, but not to the extent that I'd done before. And it was where I met um, Mark, my husband, and we stayed in Northamptonshire, um, set up home together there, and um, had two lovely girls. God blessed us richly. And um, when I got pregnant with Beth, my first daughter, I realised I'd really got to take myself in hand. and. With God's help, I managed to eat sensibly, keep a sensible weight for 20 years, but always inside of me there was this 
you have to exercise. If you don't exercise, your weight's going to balloon. If you go over eight stone, the world's going to end, something like that. So it was always with me. And, you know, I'd say things, ridiculous things like, oh, I feel fat and I look fat today and all this sort of stuff, which was complete rubbish. But that's how I felt. Um, Yeah, so that's what happened for the next 20 years. So it was on an even keel. I was involved with lots of Christian things. But still there was this unhappiness inside me that I couldn't quite get over that that I had to control um, myself and my body weight. So Jan, that's a, a long time, over 20 years you say there, with this, this continual battle w- with it. Um, how, how was it living for such a long time with this continual issue that you were facing? Well, Paul, it it was hard because I couldn't let my guard down. Um, and when stresses come, I don't seem to be that resilient. And it seems to be my go-to thing that I lose my appetite and then I like the feel of it. So it can then sort of tip into, oh, well, I just won't eat today or um, I need to exercise a bit more. I need to go out and run again today. Um, and yeah, it's, it's times when things are tough and things were tough um, over those 20 years with various things. Um, I was blessed in lots of ways by God. You know, I had a lovely home, lovely friends, great church, um, two lovely daughters. Um, it was just, you know, the way God has blessed me is amazing and yet, This was my go-to when things got tough. So we're sat here today, Jan, and uh, you know I know I know a bit of your story. We've chatted before we started to film today, Uh, and perhaps you could just share the the time at which there was this this breakthrough for you, Uh, and what what was that like? Well, Paul, it was when I moved to Dorset with my family. we came along to DBC. It was the first church we came to. We d- intended to do the rounds of the whole, whole of the churches in Dorchester, but we settled here. Um, we were made very welcome, but still I was living with this unhappiness inside me. And um, a dear friend of mine, Margaret, she introduced me to two lovely ladies in our church, Anne and Mary, and they really helped me to overcome some of the difficulties and issues I'd felt since I was a child, um, which was really lovely. They gave me a tremendous amount of time, very, and obviously it was God working through them. And um, I was able to forgive people that I not forgiven. I was able to move on from a lot of the things that um, I'd been wrestling with, yet still, I had this eight stone cut off and I was still exercising. Um, And then, Paul, um, there was a huge difficulty in my life in 2016. There was um, a big thing to overcome. And um, unfortunately, my um, marriage broke up. And I find when I'm stressed that I do stop eating anyway. And as I heard that people were making comments about my marriage breakup and my weight loss, I became very anxious and unfortunately my anorexia took over again. I then be- it then became that I wanted to lose weight and I would exercise and exercise in the middle of the night sometimes. Um, But weirdly, it was a time of real spiritual growth for me as well. I felt released by God to worship in a way that I'd always found very hard, very British. (laughs) Um, And the love of the people in the fellowship was just amazing. And 
I did seek professional help this time and I um, was helped by my GP and also um, by a new relationship. Um, I found love for a second time with my friend Paul White and he came with, along with me to a course that was held right here in this church called Taste Life. So they're a Christian charity and they say, seek to help people with eating disorders. And one thing that I learnt through that was that you can be released, completely released from it. Um, I'd always assumed it was almost like alcoholism, that it was always there with you. And although I would say I'm not there yet, knowing that I can be completely healed from this is really amazing that God can do that and I'm getting there it's a work in progress I still when I'm stressed um, it can be a pull but God knows that God God knows about me and he cares and he helps me and he gives us the Holy Spirit to help us and it doesn't say in the Bible that you have to be completely sorted before you can become a Christian. God knows where we are and he loves us anyway. And I could say that through the last 25, 30 years when I've wrestled with that, he has never let me down. People have let me down, I've let people down, but he doesn't let you down. And he never will. I'm absolutely convinced of that. So I would say to, to other people that are wrestling with mental health difficulties, God is there for you, he can be there for you. And if people judge you, listen to God, don't listen to them. Um, he sent Jesus and through him, we can be completely free, completely innocent. And well, just that's through God's love. So Jan, I'm very aware that um, potentially there's people watching this video who, who may also be going through eating disorders or, or other struggles in life. And I just wonder, what, what advice would you give them? I think, um, Paul, there are people out there that can help you. Um, obviously, if you go down the professional route, that is sense, very sensible. But speak to a friend. Come to come to church. There's this is a great community, and there are people that will help you, and not judge you. And it's a scary thing to go for help because you are relinquishing control. But it's horrible to live like this as well. So please seek help. Take that first step, and then let somebody help you. If they don't know how to help, they can find somebody that will. And I've been blessed by the love of a church fellowship and the love of God. And God knows, God cares, and he loves me no matter what, whether I'm battling with a mental health disorder, an illness, if I've shouted at the kids, whatever he knows and he will help you so jan i really just want to thank you um, a very brave thing to do to be so honest and i'm sure that many others that are watching this would probably if they were here want to express their thanks as well so thank you so much thanks paul it's been good to talk i was really scared about coming and doing this but i'm hoping that it will help somebody